Hi everyone. So normally, you're probably used to at this point me doing videos up there on the board, but for this, I felt like I could get the point across a little bit quicker without setting all that stuff up just to talk through some things a bit more loosely, I suppose. Where what I want to give is a bit of context for where matrices come from, where this sort of logic was developed, and what sort of things people were trying to find when matrices were, as it were, well, defined when the idea of a matrix was developed. And the idea of using a tabular array to describe the terms of some sort of algebraic process is actually a fairly old one, that it dates back to second century BCE China with the nine chapters on the mathematical art, which I'm not going to bother butchering the name in actual Chinese, but the idea there is very similar to what we have now in terms of taking an augmented matrix and focusing down on those coefficients. It's a thought process there that makes the problem simpler for hopefully reasons that we understand at this point after having a couple weeks of practice with it. And then from there, the specific idea of a matrix comes from the Latin mater, meaning mother, which is said to be a notation used by James Joseph Sylvester in 1850, where this, the thing that the matrix is the mother of, is what we're actually talking about this week with determinants and minors, where Sylvester put it as, I have in previous papers defined a matrix as a rectangular array of terms out of which different systems of determinants may be engendered as from the womb of a common parent. So, the idea of a matrix is properly ancient, but the way that we talk about them today in terms of our more exacting notation with these references here is more recent and more in terms specifically of what we're looking at here, the determinant, which again is actually kind of a nice microcosm of a lot of what we see in this class, that we have things that are both very, very old and also fairly new and sort of the developing story of what math is, not just as a collection of random things that I am trying to make your life more inconvenient with that it's actually a developing field in a lot of ways. But anyway, that's a bit of where these things come from. Now I also want to give a little bit on what exactly a determinant is, why we might be interested in the children of a matrix, as it were. And one way you can understand what a determinant tells you is to think in terms of shapes. That matrices, in a sense, tell us about regions in space with n dimensions, where that's determined by the number of rows and columns, that's what I'm talking about square things for determinants. So if you have a two by two matrix, when we're getting the determinant of that, you can think of it as giving us something like the area of a rectangular shape. It's something in particular called a parallelogram, I believe is the word for it. I, I, that looks like a parallelogram in the picture, but I don't remember if there's a specific term for this kind of thing. We're understanding it perfectly comes from vectors, which we'll get to later, but the point here is, when we're getting that AD minus BC term, that's kind of like finding the area of a rectangle that's been tilted a little bit. So you have to take out some of that extra space at the top, bottom, and sides. And then we move to three dimensions, which we're gonna be seeing more of in a bit. You can think of that as essentially pulling us out and looking into a third dimension. That is, we have a three by three matrix. We're getting the volume now of what's called a parallelopipid, I think. I probably mispronounced that, but it's a three-dimensional parallelogram, essentially. And then if we talk about a four by four determinant, which we're not gonna see much of in this class for the fact that it's just a lot of work, then we're moving into four dimensions and that's harder to picture. But hopefully you have a little bit more of a sense about why we might be interested in determinants, at the very least from a geometric perspective. And then from there, if you go further with linear algebra, which I know many of you won't, but if you do, and it's worth maybe some time if you wanna look into it, you'll see that there are a lot more things you can do with determinants besides just what we're going to see here in terms of these geometries and then later Kramer's rule. They're actually a very, very important piece of mathematical... Let's see, what's, what's what I'm going to use here? Um, terminology, I guess, to be very simplistic in terms of that, that you can do many things with determinants and there are many special properties of determinants that we're going to see almost none of here because we're pretty narrow in our focus onto systems of equations. That's so where people get introduced to matrices most of the time now, so we're not gonna get into all the detail of that. We're not gonna truly get into linear algebra, but I did wanna give you guys a bit more context for what these things are, where they come from, and maybe, just maybe, it's probably too much to ask for, why you might wanna care about them. Anyway, let's get back up to the board and do some more math, a little bit less math history.